Hey, what's going on guys? Today I want to walk through the scenario where you might have a local model that you've established from a live connection to a source semantic model on the service. Now say that when you set up this local model, you only selected a couple of the tables and you didn't bring everything in. Well, now you want to go back and you want to add a couple additional uh, tables that exist at the source semantic model. What you don't want to do is create a second connection and go in and connect to the semantic model again and then establish relationships on the back end. That's a waste of time. We might as well use the relationships and model that exists at the source. This is a very easy and simple solution, but I get this question a lot. So let's go ahead and look at my screen and we can walk through how to do this. All right, guys, so as you can see on my screen, I've got this test sales report here, and this is connected live to the Power BI semantic model Dunder Mifflin sales master data set, which is in my demo workspace. And just if we look at the lineage on the service, you'll see that it is indeed connected directly to that Dunder Mifflin sales master data set via live connection. So the idea before we get to the local model and direct query connection piece is what happens when I come into the master report here or the master data set and I add an additional table? Will that flow through to the end user report or I guess the end user facing report? Well, in live connection, if I were to add a new table, establish a relationship, whatever, if you go to the report file that's connected live and click refresh that would automatically populate here because it's connected live so it's just mirroring the model of the semantic model that it's connected to now things start to change a little bit when you switch this to a direct query connection by making changes to the model and adding a local model let's go ahead and see how all that works so i'm going to click on make changes to this model down here at the bottom and you can also do this under the modeling tab on the far right now we've got another video on this, but basically we are adding a local component or a local layer to our report and switching it from a live connection to a direct query connection. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and then it's gonna pop up with a window. All right, as you can see here, these are all the tables within our master sales data set. It defaults to selecting all. As you can see, there's this little checkbox next to the data set itself. And so if I were to click submit, it would pull in everything and we can actually test this out. So let's go ahead and click submit. We'll let that load for a second. All right, now you can see at the bottom that it switched from that live connection to a direct query storage mode. So if I go to my source master data set file here, and let's just for example, we'll add just kind of a test table. So down here, I'm just gonna call this test table. I'm gonna click load. And for sake of this example, I'm not gonna add any relationships, but you can see that it's now a part of our model here in the bottom of our data pane. So I'm gonna go ahead and publish this up to overwrite my existing uh, data set on the service. All right, now it's published. So let's go over to our report file. Now this report file is pointing to the master data set version that is on the service. So now the version that it's pointing to has that new uh, table. So if I come over to home and click refresh, we'll give it just a second and look down here at the bottom of the data pane you'll see that that test table automatically populates. And this behavior pretty much mirrors the same thing we would see when refreshing a live connection. Now, the reason that this does this is that when we established the local model, we had all selected. So whenever changes are made in terms of additional tables being added to the master data set, they'll automatically flow to your end report. Now, the question at hand today is a little bit different. So let's go back to our master data set and revert it back. So I'm gonna delete this test table and publish it back up. All right, so I've updated the master, then I've also cleared out the tables in the report layer here and reconnected to the semantic model. So we can kind of start over. So as you can see, we're connected live to the Power BI semantic model, Dunder Mifflin sales data set in my demo workspace. And we're gonna go ahead and switch this to direct query. All right, now that we're to this screen, we're gonna make some changes that kind of drive the whole purpose of what this video is about. Okay, so before we select it all, and when all was selected, any changes or additions flowed through, but this time we're gonna unselect that. And we're just gonna select a couple of tables that make up the model. So we'll select the hub orders. We'll put in the dates, ship date, order date, and maybe we'll bring in shippers and we'll click submit. 
All right, so now you can see we've just got kind of a stripped down uh, version of the model. It's still coming from the exact same source though. It's just, we brought in four of the tables. Now the question is, what if a new table was added to the source semantic model? Or what if we changed our mind and I'd already kind of built out the whole report, but wanted to add one of the other tables? Well, what you don't do is click on get data and go to semantic models and try to resource it there because it's gonna ultimately create a second connection to the analysis services semantic model. And then you're gonna to have to establish all the relationships manually and it's just not a good way to go about it. As mentioned in the intro to the video, we really just wanna lean on the existing model and bring in the tables as they exist uh, in the model from the source. So what we're gonna do is go to file, come down to options and settings and click on data source settings. Here you can see that we're selected on that direct query source and we're gonna click change source. Once we get to this screen, let's go ahead and select the exact same master data set that we're already connected to and click create. And once you do this, it actually brings us back to that screen where we initially made those selections. So from here, if I wanna maybe bring in uh, order details and uh, product, then I can make those selections and then we can go ahead and click submit. It's gonna load those changes and I can close out of that. And as you can see over here, we've got products and order details existing in the model now. So that is how you do this. And I hope that this has been enlightening for some of you. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment or reach out via email. And I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks.